As you all have heard, Bank Negara have just released the announcement that there will be a second moratorium for Malaysians to apply, starting from the 7th of July. And a lot of you have asked us, should I apply for it? And what are the financial impact that will affect me if I do? So in this video, we will cover all that you need to know about Malaysia's moratorium. And if you want to know whether it is a good idea, then be sure to stay all the way until the end of this video. Coming, Coming up, up next. next. What is moratorium and how does it work? For those of you who do not know what is moratorium, it's basically a relief measure offered by the government where the people, which means you, can apply to postpone your monthly bank loans up to six months. So who can apply? All individual borrowers, micro enterprises, as well as small and medium businesses can apply for the moratorium at their local bank. And the moratorium can be applied to all loans except credit card loans. However, for those who have missed out more than 90 days of their loan repayment will not be eligible to apply for the moratorium in 2021. And if you really need help in your debt, it is highly advisable that you reach out to AKPK as they are specialized in helping people with their debt. So do you have to make a manual application with your bank? And how do you do that? Yes, do take note that the moratorium in 2021 does not automatically take in effect like the one in 2020. So if you really want to postpone your loan, you will have to contact your bank and apply for it. But don't worry, the application for the moratorium is quite simple. And most banks offer online forms for the borrowers to apply so you don't have to go directly to the bank. And if you're not internet savvy, you can also contact your bank and the customer service will guide you accordingly. But please keep in mind that moratorium means postponement. You still have to pay back whatever loan that you have when the time comes. And that also includes the interest. So don't be too relaxed and think that you can enjoy a six months commitment free holiday because it might cost you even more than you think. And we will help you break down how much it will actually cost you if you opt for the moratorium. When Bank Negara announced a six months moratorium, they mentioned that there shall be no compounding interest or profit on profit during these six months. But interest will still be accrued. That means your monthly interest will still continue to apply even during this non-repayment period. But how much more interest will you actually have to pay? Let's look at the numbers, shall we? So in order to illustrate further, we decide to present it on an Excel sheet. So assuming you have a housing loan worth 500,000 ringgit with a fixed interest rate at 4.5% with a loan tenure of 30 years. Your loan repayment table would look like this if you did not opt in for the moratorium. Every month, you'll be making a loan repayment of around 2,500 ringgit. And if you notice, your interest would be reducing as your principal increase as you make your loan repayment every month. This is because ultimately, what we want is to reduce the ending balance. But if today we were to opt in the moratorium, our loan repayment table would look like this. We will have six months where we didn't make any loan repayment and our principal would be empty as well. But our interest will continue to accrue based on our last ending balance, which is 499000 And this interest will continue to accumulate throughout the six months period. In total, it will be around 11000 this 11,000 will be added into our ending balance, 499,000, and it will become 510,000 after our six months moratorium. So as you can see here, this ending balance, this new ending balance is a lot higher than our previous ending balance. This is because of the accrued accumulated interest throughout the six months moratorium period. Now, generally, the bank will offer you three ways on how you would like to settle your extra interest. Option number one would be you can choose to pay your normal monthly commitment and extend your loan tenure to settle the outstanding interest. 
So like in the earlier example, I can continue to pay my 2,533 ringgit every month, but the bank will add another 15 to 20 months into my loan tenure. Or you can choose the opposite, where you pay a higher monthly installment and keep the same loan tenure. The final option would be you can pay off the six months interest in lump sum and then continue to pay the same monthly installment and still remain the same loan tenure. Whichever way you choose, do kindly consult with your local bank for further advice because all in all, it will still have to depend on the terms and condition of each individual's bank's contract. Okay, for the crucial question, should you opt in for moratorium? If you have no way of making payments for your loan, then yes, by all means, go and apply for it until you can get back on your feet again. But just keep it in mind that the interest is still running and the longer you keep delaying paying your loan, the more interest you will have to pay back. If you do not want to opt in for the moratorium, there are other alternatives that the banks offer. So do refer back to your respective banks and consult with them as soon as possible. If you like this video, you most probably like this video right over here. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye.